In this tutorial, I will show you how to change background of an image, using Superimpose Classic app on iPad. I am doing it on an iPad, but the interface is the same on iPhone as well. I am starting the project by first loading a background image. Let me use a stock photo. I can search for a keyword to search from the stock photos. Let's search for Eiffel Tower. Okay, now I am going to add a foreground from my camera roll. This is the photo, for which I want to change the background. Double tapping on the transform tab, fits the foreground into the background. And then I am moving to the mask tab, where I can erase the old background. The idea is to keep the couple unchanged, while removing the surrounding of the image. That way, it will look as though the couple is standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. I am going to use the magic lasso tool. Using this tool, I can draw an approximate boundary around the object I want to cut out, and the app will smartly remove it from the surroundings. I am now going to draw the boundary around the couple. Once that is done, press the tick mark button. The app will now smartly cut out the object inside the boundary. We can view the masked foreground in different viewing modes. Let me view the mask in green color and see if there are any rough edges. I can use the brush masking tool to refine the mask. To restore an existing mask, tap on the mask mode button. This will change the mode to restore. In this mode, I can unmask a mask. I can switch between the erase and restore mode back and forth while using the mask tool. Let me switch to the smart brush. This brush tries to guess what is inside the object, and what is outside. You can refer to the masking tutorial video for more details. I am switching to a different mask color, to see if I can see anything else, that needs cleaning. This area needs to be removed. I think the masking is done. The foreground is now ready, to be placed on the background. Let me switch to viewing the blended image. Let me now move and scale the foreground, to a better location. This is done in the transform section of the app. Okay. Now I will move to the filters section, and adjust the colors of the foreground, to match it with the background. Let me make it a bit bluish. This will reduce the yellow hue of the foreground. Now it looks perfect. To make the photo look more natural, we can selectively blur the background. The focus tool can do that, which can be found under the editor section. But before that, we need to tell the tool that we want to edit the background and not the foreground. This little button can be used to switch between the background and the foreground. I have selected the background. This tool can create a blur gradient on the image. The gradient can be of different shapes. Let me select a radial gradient, where the middle is more blur. I can adjust the gradient size using touch gestures. This looks good. I am going to accept the edits. Since, I have tediously masked the foreground and I can reuse this cutout on some other backgrounds too. It would be a good idea, to save the cutout into my mask library. I can tap on the export button, and then select, save mask to mask library, to save the mask. I will come back to this later, and show you how to reuse the saved mask. 
but for now, I will merge the foreground into the background, to make it a single image. This way, I will be able to apply an effect on the entire image, instead of applying them on the foreground and background separately. This is because, I want to apply this effect on the whole image. Merge can be done by pressing this merge button here. Now, let me go to the filters section and apply a color effect. This looks good, but let me reduce the strength of the effect. I can compare before and after the filter, by pressing this button here. Everything looks good. Let me save the photo to my camera roll. Next, I will show you how to use the saved mask, on a different background. First, let me delete this project. Let me load a different background image. And this time, we are going to load the foreground image from the mask library. To do that, I am pressing the mask lib button here. This is the mask library. As you can see, the image that we masked before, and then saved into the mask library, is showing up here. Let me load this as the foreground image. Like I expected, this image is already nicely masked. I do not need to do the masking again. All I have to do, is go to the transform section and place it at the desired location. I am doing some color adjustments again, to match it with the background. And just like the last project, I am merging down the foreground, and then applying an effect to spice it up. Okay, this project is done. We can save it now. In the next example, I am going to show you how to even add a shadow, to make it look more natural. For this project, I have an image of a pyramid as a background photo. In the filters section, again I will try to match the foreground image with the background. This time I am making it a bit red, to match it with the desert behind. And now, press this cast shadow button, in the layers section. This creates a shadow behind the foreground, which you can move and reshape. I can also adjust the blur, around the shadow and the opacity, of the shadow. And when done, accept the edit. That is all in this tutorial. Thank you for watching.